Hello everyone, and welcome to a brand new Star Rail Theory and Speculation video. Today, I want to speculate on our next destination on the Astral Express, Amphorius. This video will be my early speculations, and when we get more information in the future, I will definitely talk about this place more. Now, this video does contain spoilers for the quest listed on screen now, so if you haven't done those, you have been warned. With all that said though, let's get right into the video. Before we get into discussing Amphorius itself, I want to talk about what this planet is based on. From the information we have so far, Amphorius seems to take a lot of inspiration from ancient Greece, with bits of ancient Rome as well. So let's go over these inspirations and what they could mean for our time here. First, the achievement you get when deciding on Amphorius as your next destination is called Tell Me, O Muse. This is a quote from Homer's Odyssey, an epic that takes place in ancient Greece. The name Amphorius itself refers to an ancient Greek unit of liquid measure, equal to about 9 gallons. The name also refers to a type of vase used in ancient Greek vase painting, the Amphora. In Chinese, the name of the planet resembles Omphalos, a rounded stone representing the navel of the earth in ancient Greek mythology. The Amphalo stone at Delphi was considered to be the center of the world in ancient Greece. The nickname for Amphorius is the Eternal Land, which could be inspired by Rome's nickname, the Eternal City. As I said, most of these inspirations seem to come from ancient Greece. As such, I could easily see Amphorius as a planet that thinks very highly of various arts and studies. Its name comes from a type of vase used in vase painting after all, so painters, sculptors, and poets could all be quite common on the planet. Ancient Greece was also polytheistic, meaning they believed in many gods. This could be represented by the three paths the world is torn between, and it will likely be a major part of the story. Due to this inspiration, different areas of the planet could each belong to different factions. While the same general theme may be present throughout Amphorius, each explorable area we visit could have a unique style depending on the faction that lives there and their beliefs. As I've said already, Amphorius is currently torn between three different paths. According to Black Swan, the destiny of this planet is uncertain as a result of these paths. I have a few ideas for what the destiny of Amphorius could end up being, but I'm going to save those for the next section of this video. For now, I want to discuss the paths I believe Amphorius is torn between, those being the Remembrance, the Erudition, and the Enigmata. I've previously discussed the idea of these three paths on Amphorius in my video about Mythos, and I still believe that they fit with this world. First off, these three paths could each fit the theme of ancient Greek inspirations. To this day, we don't know everything about ancient Greece due to the fact that it existed long ago. Not everything is remembered. The people of ancient Greece were able to build magnificent structures and make contributions to many important fields. They had a lot of knowledge. Ancient Greece was home to many myths and legends, including tales of gods and monsters. These beings and creatures were quite enigmatic. While all three paths fit within the main theme, they also contradict and go against each other in certain ways. These contradictions would be why the destiny of Amphorius is so uncertain. For starters, the erudition and the enigmata are pretty much opposites of each other. The erudition seeks the preservation of knowledge, while the enigmata seeks to obscure the truth. So the question is, will the truth or the lies be remembered on Amphorius by the Remembrance? Since Amphorius is a hidden world, its history has remained a mystery to outsiders. When we arrive on this planet, we won't know the true history yet. Our goal on Amphorius may be to research the truth of this world's history and uncover what really happened here, allowing the Remembrance to properly store this information. So, with these three paths decided, what could we see happen on Amphorius? For starters, I think we'll encounter a world where fact and fiction blend together, making it hard to discern the truth. The influence of the Enigmata on Amphorius will cause fictional beings to exist in reality here. We've seen this happen a few times, especially with the history fictionologists. Recently, we met Gallagher on Penacone, who was a creation of a history fictionologist. Some of the enemies we face on Amphorius could be fictional entities created by the power of the Enigmata, perhaps based on creatures seen in Greek myths. 
Followers of the erudition may be working to figure out which beings are real and which are creations of the Enigmata. They would hope to find the true history of Amphorius and separate that history from the myths of the Enigmata. Eventually, the Remembrance will have to catalog the history of Amphorius. Will the Enigmata successfully change the history of the planet, or will the erudition successfully discover the planet's true history? The first outcome would be that the Enigmata is successful. In this outcome, the fictional beings on Amphorius will become ingrained into the planet's history, changing and obscuring events of the past. The second outcome would be that the erudition is successful. In this outcome, the fictional beings on Amphorius would cease to exist, which could include new friends made on the planet, but the planet's history would remain intact. In my opinion, both of these outcomes have a pretty big downside. With one ending, history would be obscured, and with the other, a bunch of beings would cease to exist. So, is there a way for us to have a happy ending here? I believe there is, with the final outcome being that both paths are successful. I know the concept of this outcome sounds a bit confusing, as the erudition and the enigmata are opposites. How could both paths be successful if they're opposites? Well, the answer to that question would be time. So far in this video, I've been focusing on the element of history and how these two paths affect it. However, history is only one side of the coin, and there's still the future to worry about. The future is not yet fully determined, as the story is still being written. As such, instead of overwriting the past, the Enigmata could help write the future of Amphorius. Going back to the inspiration for the planet's name, let's think of the story of Amphorius as a vase painting on an amphora. The current painting on the vase would represent the history of Amphorius, which is what the erudition wants to protect and preserve. Instead of painting over this work, a new work could be started on the other side of the vase, representing the future. Adding these fictional beings to the future would allow them to come into existence without affecting the past. Therefore, both sides would be successful, allowing both the erudition and the enigmata to thrive on Amphorius. The erudition would successfully protect the history of Amphorius, while the beings created by the enigmata would be able to keep living peacefully on the planet. The purity of the remembrance would be maintained as well, as history would not be tainted. Now, one thing I haven't mentioned in this video so far is the reason why Amphorius was picked as our next destination aboard the Astral Express. At the moment, the Astral Express is dangerously low on fuel. The Astral Express usually gains more fuel from the trailblazing expeditions that the Nameless go on. However, due to our prolonged stays on recent worlds, the fuel has run low, and the Express can only make two more warp jumps before running dry. When we were discussing this, Black Swan appeared and offered her advice. She suggested that we head to Amphorius, a planet that not even Akivili reached. She claims that if we are able to lay down a track to this planet, we would never have to worry about running out of fuel ever again. With this amount of fuel, the Astral Express would be able to make more warp jumps than ever before. Therefore, we could go on more trailblazing adventures, which would in turn make more fuel for the Express. As such, after our time on Amphorius, we would be able to visit other locations more often, including places we've been in the past and places we haven't yet been to. However, a lot goes into developing a new world for us to visit, including locations, characters, lore, and so much more. So, if we are able to visit more worlds after Amphorius, they could be related to places we've been in the past. They could also be places where certain playable characters are from, so that we don't get an overwhelming amount of new characters for a small visit. Worlds like this could include other Zianzhou Sips, Pier Point, and Planet Screwlum. These worlds could also only have a few areas for us to explore, perhaps around 2-4 to four areas. We would still get bigger planets in the X.0 updates, which would be the main focus of the game for about 3 or 4 updates. These other worlds would be the focus for 1 or 2 updates, acting as Trailblaze detours. Anyways, that's pretty much it from my thoughts on Amphorius at the moment. This world already seems quite interesting to me, and I can't wait until we finally get to visit it. If you want more of my thoughts about Star Rail though, I recommend my videos on version 2.5 Speculations, Mythos, Ouroboros, and Adrilla. I would love to hear what other ideas you have for Amphorius in the comments below as well! Anyways, that's it for this video, thank you so much for watching! 
Sources and further readings are also in the description if you want to check them out. I hope you all have an amazing day, and I'll see you all in the next video.